I'm Emerald Lagasse, and welcome to the Essence of Emerald. Horseradish. Most of us think of it as the thing that spices up our Bloody Marys or our seafood cocktail sauces. Well, those are great, but horseradish has a lot more on its menu. I use it in all kinds of meats and fish and vegetable dishes. You see, it's an ancient root that's the member of the mustard family. That's what makes sense about it because it smells, almost tastes like mustard. 3,000 acres, approximately, of horseradish are cultivated every year in the United States, mostly on the West Coast. And although most of it winds up in jars, it is very possible these days to find horseradish or root in the supermarket. One of the major ingredients that I use horseradish for in my restaurants is my homemade Worcestershire sauce. And one of my signature dishes, which I'm going to show you in a little bit on the show, is made with horseradish at my restaurant Nola in the French Quarter. Now, how do you make horseradish? You can, don't have to buy it in those jars if you don't want to. If you want to make some yourself, it's quite easy, and I'm going to show you some. Usually it comes in root form, just like this. And what you got to do is it's got a pretty tough skin on the outside, as you can see, so you want to peel it. You want to peel the horseradish and take the sort of the bark, if you will, off of the horseradish. Member of the mustard family. So once you got it peeled, trimmed up, Now what you can do is you're ready to grate your horseradish. Now, you probably look and see this right here. That's the stuff that you usually buy that's prepared, that's uh, sold in the jars and all the grocery stores. Well, I'm going to show you how to make that. I use a little bit, the heavy grate on a grate box, and just grate the horseradish root. Now, that's one way grating it to really get the flavor from the horseradish root. Now, the other way to get the flavor, as I grated earlier, grate it up. And boy, it's really, really potent, the smell of that. Now, to make horseradish, it's quite simple. What you want to do is you want to take some white, just regular white distilled vinegar in a sauce pot. And then you want to add your horseradish to that. And you can smell it instantly. It's powerful. You know, the stronger, when you're grating the horseradish, the stronger the smell, it, it's, that's how you can really tell the freshness of the horseradish root, is when it's really, really, strong smell. I mean, it'll almost make you tear. You know that that root is real fresh. Now, you add the vinegar in there, and what I'm going to do to cut the sharpness a little bit is I'm going to add just a little bit of sugar. I'm going to add a little bit of sugar, and then we'll mix that in there. And then I'm going to add a little bit of salt. Now, when the vinegar, can you see that? When the vinegar is almost evaporated, and we're sort of steeping our horseradish, you probably, you can take it off and have it like that, and you can just keep it in an airtight jar in the refrigerator, and you have fresh 
horseradish. Or if you want to cream the horseradish, like horseradish sauce, you can use a little cream, or what really works well is a little bit of sour cream. You add a little sour cream in that. And you just sort of work the sour cream just until it is incorporated. And then you can put it inside of your container. And now you've made your own homemade horseradish. You can just keep it in the refrigerator, flavor your Bloody Marys, make a horseradish sauce, or what you can do is stay right here with me on the Essence of Emerald, because when we come back, I'm going to show you one of the most popular dishes at my restaurant, NOLA. Don't go away. We'll be right back. I'm Emeril Lagasse. Thanks for staying with me on The Essence of Emeril. You know, we all love horseradish in our cocktail sauce. It's great with boiled seafood and fried seafood. And so it's made sense to me that crusting fish in horseradish would be a big hit. Well, actually, I was right. I uh, have a great friend in New York City, Larry Forgione, fabulous chef, pioneer of American cuisine, or the rebirth of it, and uh, a disciple of James Beard. And, you know, about 15 years ago, I talked with Larry about cooking with cedar planks. So two and a half years ago, when I opened my restaurant, NOLA, it dawned on me, particularly with having a wood-burning oven, that I should do something on cedar. And then I started thinking about trout, which is everywhere in the Gulf, and a big fish of New Orleans and Louisiana great old speckled trouts, and horseradish, which I've sort of been bringing into the city for about 12 years with the creation of my homemade Worcestershire sauce. So it made sense to me to do a great dish, a horseradish fish, especially as a hot item for NOLA. So this is what I created and came up with. I went and found these cedar planks, or they actually what they are, cedar shingles, untreated cedar shingles. And you can see the, the width of them. They're just an untreated cedar shingle. And my great friend Annie, Ann Kearney, my assistant, we brought these up with us and we said, you know, we're going to do one of this fish right here, right for you. So here we go. Hang on to your hats. You take one of the cedar shingles and what you need to do you can do this on your bobby outside. It's fabulous. What you need to do is take a little bit of oil and rub it into the shingle. Watch for the splinters now. Use a brush. So you oil the shingle. Hey, you've been to Nola, you probably have had this dish, right? I got a filet of trout. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to season the shingle, put my filet of trout on here, and then I'm going to season my filet of trout. And then I'm going to take some fresh grated horseradish root, fresh grated horseradish root, with a little bit of cilantro, a little bit of citrus peel. I'm using orange and lemon citrus peel. And what I'm going to do is flavor that up, toss it around. It already smells fantastic. The combination of fresh grated horseradish root and citrus, woo, already it's, it, it already tastes good. But what we're going to do now is we're going to take this 
and just cover our, make a little crust right over our filet of trout. You see that? And it looks beautiful. And then take a little bit, just a tiny bit of olive oil. And then what I do is I put it right on side, put it right on the grill. And we put it right in the uh, wood-burning oven at NOLA. And we just drizzle a little bit of oil. And you can see what's happening. What's happening is that the heat of the grill or the bobby is starting to heat the bottom of the shingle. And as it starts to heat the bottom of the shingle, it's starting to burn the shingle. So this cedar smell starts just getting in the fish. You can smell it in here because all the camera guys right now and gals are all knocked out. And they think I'm totally insane that I'm cooking this thing on a shingle. But when you see how this tastes, you see that, how it's starting to ignite? When that begins to happen, what you want to do is you want to cover it. Now, everybody's got some sort of big pot cover or a wok cover like this. You want to sort of trap some of the smells and some of the smoke from the shingle there. Now, what we're going to do next, since we now are waiting, cooking our cedar trout, is we're going to take a little bit of lemon juice. You remember that peel that we used? A little orange juice. And then we're going to take a little bit of sesame oil and a little soy. And then lots of green onion. Then what we're going to do now is we're going to just stir that in there. So we got a little dipping sauce to put over our cedar trout. We're going to add a little bit of salt, just a little bit. We got some soy in there, so you don't want to over salt it. And some pepper. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to check and see Oh, look at that. You see the smoke? We're trapping some of that in there. The trout's getting injected with cedar smoke. Look at that. And the fish, you can see that right over here. It's boiling and simmering away. The fish is cooking right on this cedar shingle. So now, at NOLA, we serve this awesome little slaw. We serve a little slaw with this dish, and it's absolutely fantastic. And the only thing is that NOLA, we do it inside of the wood oven. But I tell you, in my new book and at home, I get some of these shingles, and I cook some fish on the shingle. Man, let me tell you. Whoo! You hear it popping? That's what we want right there, because after a few minutes to heat, the embers are going to start cooking on the outside of that, you see? And what it's doing is it's crusting this. And we just cover it up a little bit. And it takes no time. It just takes minutes. Now, what would you serve with this? Maybe some potatoes, maybe a slaw like we do at NOLA? Or maybe you would serve what? Maybe just a little salad with this? It's really, really fantastic. And speaking about fantastic, I'll tell you what. If you stay with me, I'm going to finish this dish, and I'm going to do another dish for you. That's another great dish at NOLA. Stay with me right here on The Essence of Emerald. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You think I'm mad, don't you? That's okay. What a dish. What a dish. Hey, 
We got about maybe 10, 15 seconds. You see how it's nice and crusty? The fish is cooked. You could do this with salmon. You could do it with really any kind of fish that you like. We'll do a little, little plank fish. Now, once it's cooked and you take it off, we're going to serve this right on the plate like this. Okay? And then what you do is that dipping sauce that we had, you just serve that dipping sauce and woo! What a dish! What a dish! Hey, you know what? I got somebody I got to thank out there. I got somebody I got to thank for inspiring me to do this on the Essence of Emerald. I got this great letter from Bob Cardone in New Jersey. And Bob, I thank you for your great notes, and I thank you for your compliments saying about that he had, he's very excited, loves the show, and he had the best meal that he's ever eaten. Thank you. In many years, Last fall at NOLA, the cedar plank trout. Well, Bob, there you have it. And uh, we're going to get all those recipes out to you as well. And thanks for writing in. And hey, all of you out there, come on, write to me. Come on, write to me. I'll even send you the spice mixture. Well, look, what are we going to serve with this? I'll tell you what we're going to serve with it. What we're going to do is we're going to make another sort of horseradish crust. Because we're cooking with horseradish today. I'm going to take some fresh grated horseradish and some fresh grated Parmesan cheese. Fresh grated Parmesan cheese. For those of you following me right now that just ran into the refrigerator and grabbed that container of that green stuff, put it back. Fresh grated Parmesan cheese, fresh grated horseradish, and then we're going to add a little bit of cilantro as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to sort of just toss that around so that we have a crust. Now, what I did is I just boiled some very simple new potatoes till they were really, really fork tender. And now what I'm going to do is just make sure that I got all the water drained out of them. And I'm going to pop them in this bowl right here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some butter, a little bit of cream, and then... I'm going to add some salt and some pepper. And I'm going to pop these and mash them, smash them all up just like that. And then once we've got them all smashed up like that, I'm going to take this little casserole that I got, pop them right inside of there, probably put another half a slab of butter right there, and then I'm going to add a little bit of essence, and I'm going to take that crust that we made. Woo! You want to talk about good. We'll pop these in my oven here. And some that I did just for you guys. Look at that. You brown them up about 20 to 30 minutes. And you serve a little bit of this. Woo! Serve a little bit of that with that cedar fish. And you want to talk about fantastic. Now you're talking fantastic. Serve a little bit of those horseradish 
potatoes with some of that delicious fish. You know that essence right here, the essence. And speaking about essence, you better join me tomorrow right here on the Essence of Emerald. I'll see you then.